Hey guys, today I'd like to give you a demo of my Strapi application. The front end was built with React and back end is of course built with Strapi. Front end is hosted on Netlify and the back end is hosted on Heroku using Postgres database. So let's go ahead and create an account since I don't have one. Let's add an image. Enter our credentials and some basic information. and let's create an account. Once the account is submitted, you are greeted with the dashboard where you have your projects and bugs. So let's go ahead and add a project. So let's go ahead and add an image, project name, a brief description of the project, and some links. The links are not required, but since I already have these available to a project that I built before, let's go ahead and do so. So we'll have a live URL and a GitHub link. Click at project and here we are. We could click on the project, see the basic details page. We could go to the live preview of the project that we're working on, or we could see the code in GitHub. Let's go ahead and add a bug. So this will be our first bug. Let's set it due date on the 24th. Some bug, let's do this thing. And we're going to set the priority to high, severity critical, and we're going to set it as a bug. Click add bug. And now we have our first bug. We have some basic functionality here. So once you're ready to start on the bug, you could set it to open. Once you complete it, you could set it to closed, but we're going to keep it open. We also have this edit window where you could add the name, description, click update item. It will update the description. So if you go take a look at it, you could see that it has been edited. So in this most basic example, we have full CRUD functionality. And of course we have authentication. So we could log out, we could log back in. We are able to create new users, update posts. And the whole point here is that now we have a foundation where we have a front end that we could extend with additional features. And the best part that it's powered by Strapi, where we have this amazing UI, where we are able to see all our content collection types that we created, our items, our bugs, we have our projects, and we have our users. So with that being said, this was a brief demonstration of the application. So next, I want to go ahead and walk you through how to set this application up on your local environment. So you could go ahead and play with it or add additional features if you like. I'm going to share these links in the description of the video, but we have our strap before bug tracker client and we have our bug tracker API. We're going to start here. So just go ahead, copy the code, go into your terminal. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a folder first to put all those files in. Let's CD into our folder and let's run git clone. Once it's completed, let's check out our item. Let's CD into our strappy bug tracker folder. Let's first open it in our code editor. So this is the folder structure of our application, as you could see here, which has all the items that we created for items and projects. I want to show you the package JSON file first here. So for the plugins, I'm using the Strapi GraphQL plugin. That's what I'm using to query the data when making the request from the front end. We're also using the Cloudinary provider plugin so we could save our images to the, to the Cloudinary service rather than saving them locally in our file. For the local demonstrations, we're using SQL Lite. But in terms of our deployment, we're using Postgres. We have our deployment settings here under environment variables and production databases. And we do have to add our ENV file here. I'm going to provide my personal settings, but you would have to set up cloud login information to make sure that your application works with your Cloudinary service. And finally, to set up your plugins, you would go into config. If you don't have this file, you would create plugins.js. And here you would provide your plugin configurations, which you could find in the documentation of the plugin that you used. Let's go back to our terminal. The first thing we want to do is if you haven't run npm install to install all the packages. 
once npm finish installing all your packages the first thing you want to run is npm run build that's going to build our ui and once this is completed we'll be ready to start our strappy application in development mode let's start the application by typing npm run develop our application is going to run in localhost 1337 let's create our initial account click start and here we are, we're now running our Strapi application locally on our computer. And the cool part, because we installed our GraphQL plugin, we are able to go to localhost slash GraphQL to see a GraphQL playground, which will allow us to write queries and mutations and give us ability to test our API even without having a front end. And the final step in setting up our backend application is giving the right permissions for our controllers. So we will go to settings, we want to go to roles, and we're going to go to authenticate it. And we're going to enable items, select all, projects, select all, and under upload, we want to make sure that we allow uploading, finding one, and finding all. And finally, under user permissions, we want to hit update, find one, and find. Click save, and now you are all set. That is pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and set up our front end application. By pressing Control C, we're going to stop our server. Let's go up one directory and let's create a new folder where we could clone our client React application from the GitHub link that we copied here. Once everything is completed, let's go into our Strapi bug tracker client folder. And if we do ls, we see that we have our package JSON file. Let's do npm install. Once this is finished installing, I'll show you the package JSON file of all the items that are required for this particular project. Let's open the project in VS Code. This is a React application. As we go inside the package JSON folder here, you could see all the dependencies I'm using, but let's look at the ones that stand out. We're using Apollo Client, Apollo Upload Client to allow us to upload images and GraphQL to make sure that we're able to make queries using GraphQL from the client side to our Strapi application. And another thing you'll notice is that we're using Strapi design systems, Strapi helper plugins and icons. And the reason why I did this is because I wanted to practice getting to know Strapi design system. You could learn more about Strapi at design-systems.strapi.io. You could read all the reasoning why they decided to do the things they did. More importantly, you could go ahead and see all the available components in storybooks. And this is kind of cool. And anytime you guys are going to be building a plugin, you will be using Strapi Design System to make sure that your plugins match the style and fit within the Strapi ecosystem. Now let's go back to our terminal and run npm run start and we should see our front end application appear and here we are we're ready to rock and roll and before i go if you do have questions about this application you could reach out to me or email me at codingafter30 at gmail.com i would love to help you guys out to getting started with strappy react using graphql because it's awesome and before I go, I just want to say thank you for checking out this video. And more importantly, if you want to learn about Strapi, you could go ahead to strapi.io, click get started, and you will be able to go through the documentations. It's very easy to follow. One thing I would say is that keep in mind that we are now on Strapi version four, and this is what I use for this project. So moving forward, reading everything out of uh, V4 documentation. If you do have a project that's built for version three, the documentation is still available here. But with that being said, thank you very much and I'll see you guys next time.